Well, as a country, as a rich country, it doesn't mean that everything in the country goes the way it's supposed to. Um, I think it's a misunderstanding that if you're from a country that is perceived as a rich country, that everything is going the right way. You know, um, I think it's a, it's a misunderstanding that if your country is supposed to be rich, that, um, that the people in the country are rich. I think a country being rich mostly means that um, the governments that run the country make the world perceive the country to be rich and all the people in it. It doesn't mean that the people uh, necessarily have all the rights in it they should be having and um, that uh, all their privacy and all their, um, all their social rights are being protected the way it should be. And um, I think every, in every country, whether it's a richer or a poorer country, everybody should be critical of the government because people running your lives, basically, uh, through laws, through governing, um, governing things. And, um, and obviously a lot of stuff in that goes wrong and a lot of people have um, different ideas of how that should be done, but also people protect their own agendas and a lot of those agendas are not about the people, they're about the people in power. So. And that is the same for a poorer country and a richer country too. I think it's a misconception that a richer country, the people are necessarily happy or should not be critical. So that's why we criticize also our governments, but any other government in the world. Anti-Town is actually the translated title of a book called Anti-Stadt, uh, which in English means anti-town. And it's written about one of the cities in the region I grew up in. And I lived in for a long time, Harlan. And that's a city that, is, uh, that was wealthy because of the, the coal mine industry. And when the coal mine, coal mine industry closed down, uh, it brought a lot of problems and uh, uh, a lot of people having no future. A lot of people that used to go into the coal mines when they were very young, not having a perspective on life because nothing came in return for the coal mines. And um, there's actually a lot of factors that work into it, but it, it turned into a, a very um, big drug e epidemic in the city and uh, also a big prostitution problem and everything that basically comes with drugs, crime, prostitution, everything. And it was actually a really crazy situation for two decades, the 70s, the 80s, into the 90s, until the city got it under control. And that's something, um, you usually just see in really big cities. And the title anti-town is basically because the town, usually towns grow, urban, urban areas grow as they flourish, but that's actually a town that from a wealthy situation became smaller um, and actually did everything the other way around that a, that a flourishing city does. And um, it, it's basically, uh, the embodiment of a city that a city gone wrong and a, a, a city project that is supposed to be gone the other way around and um, not just crime and drugs and prostitution but also economy, uh, economy wise. Up until this day the region has the highest uh, level of unemployment in Holland and that's still a, a direct uh, effect of um, the mines closing and nothing coming in return economically work-wise for people in the region for the last uh, two or three decades and um, it's actually been economically deprived for a long time and I think that's where maybe a lot of regions in like we said before poorer countries or maybe also richer countries that have been left or left behind can uh, maybe identify with and um, that's also why we made the video because we wanted to show the city as it was but there's a lot of people trying to you know give the city a new identity with a, lot of, uh, with a lot of art, a lot of culture, and try to get the city back to a new level. And that's, I think, we show at the end of the video as well. But it's a situation we grew up in and that molded us as people, so, and that's what it is. That's why we call it anti-town. I'm not sure. I can't, I, I can't say if people don't understand the message that we, uh, that we try to transport to people. Um, I mean, that's for people to decide. What we try to be, we try to be, uh, uh, we try to be social, socially critical um, of local governments, government situations. We just talk about how we see the world, um, especially also related to us a lot. I mean, we got 
throughout the years we wrote songs about the region we we, we live in like death in the city uh anti-town a couple of other songs uh but we also talk i mean i also talk about personal situations of my personal life that's not that much but i also put that in there and i don't know if people you know like un don't understand certain situations but uh we definitely try to be a critical band of 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 things you know i mean we see the world and we we realize that we live in a world that is not perfect and we do realize we live in a world that's mainly been made for people with money and people that have a power position and um i mean to me it would be very ignorant and naive maybe even to uh to not address it in the lyrics and if people don't get if people don't see that message maybe they should see that that's a message we have um but like i said i think people can also get something personal out of it um so you know that's basically what we're about Um, the most ridiculous comment I ever read is uh, we, we had a shirt that had wolves on it and it was wet, white and red print. So people started, there was a certain type of people that started thinking we must be a right wing band because we had wolves and red and white print. Well, we're the furthest from a right wing band you can think of. Um, we're very critical of everything. We entry, we're anti-hatred. We don't, we don't have anything to do with racism, sexism. You know, we don't have anything to do with that kind of stuff. And uh, to be perceived as a band that is right-wing and that is maybe pro-sexism, pro-certain uh, religions, pro-certain ra uh, pro certain races, where we are the total opposite, to me is the most ridiculous thing ever. Those are people that don't look into the band, don't look into the lyrics, don't look into us as humans. And I think that's completely ignorant. So that's the most I idiotic thing I ever read. Not at all. <laughs> no, the thing is, we started the band, uh, me and my old singer, and uh, we, we were figuring out, we just wanted to make music together because we were good friends, and um, so we had to figure out who was going to do what, and he didn't know how to play anything. I knew how to play the bass a little bit, so we said, okay, you're going to sing, I'm going to play bass, but I was never a bass player. Um, I probably was the worst bass player the band ever had, although I played for, I think, nine or ten years. Uh, I think I could, I learned to play as much so I could play all the songs fairly tight, but um, I'm the first one to admit that I wasn't the most talented bass player, and I always sang in bands before Born From Pain, so in all reality, I was always a singer, and I think um, what I do now is really what I'm supposed to do, so I don't miss it at all. I don't even own a base anymore. I think if if there's, I mean, hardcore's grown big as a scene, and um, I think you know, like a lot of us. Um, I mean, I can only speak for myself and the people I know. You know, that's basically also a lot of people have been doing this for a lot of time, a lot of years. Um, been on the road for like maybe two or three decades and um, people put a lot of time into it a lot of effort into it um, lost a lot of money and maybe now someone like monster or someone else comes and said hey i'll give you a couple of bucks if you maybe put my name on a couple of things everybody's got to decide for themselves if they want to do that you know if they want to if they want to say okay this is a big company and i'm going to take some money to do that but I mean, I can understand if someone says, hey, you know, if you don't have to sell your soul, no one, um, I mean, we don't have stuff like a monster endorsement, but I know, uh, I know for sure that like companies like that don't say, hey, you got to write lyrics like that, or you got to do your show like this, or you got to do certain things like that, you know. I know that, um, that you just let the band do whatever the band does, and they like for whatever the band is. And... Um, so you know the the thing is if 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 you get your freedom and you do whatever you do and someone is a company is willing to give you some money to stay on the road you know maybe make maybe have a little bit of a profit you know whatever it is or be able to make your videos i have a backdrop i think that's fine you know i mean um 
it depends on what the companies stand for, but I think there's a lot of companies that you know, like that don't really have a a, 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 a weird agenda or whatever. And you know, if someone if someone offers it, that's fine. You know, I mean, if a label offers me money to record a record, um, I take it too. You know, so. The thing is, it, it all depends on where you want to draw the line, but I don't see there's much of a problem in it, you know. It depends on what it is, obviously, but with companies like Monster, I mean, I know a couple of guys that, you know, like, that work with the bands there, and they're really cool people, you know, and like, I mean, I'm not promoting anything because I'm not sponsored by that, but I mean, I just, I just got to be honest, you know. If people were shit, I would say so, people aren't, and you know, if, if, if bigger companies think it's worth to invest in bands in our scene so the bands can stay in the road and do the coolest things, I think that's also a bit of a recognition for the scene that we are, you know, like we come a long way from squats and uh, shows for 30 people, 50, 60, 100 people to bigger shows. And if, you know, if, if that gets rewarded, I see it kind of as a recognition and a reward too. I think that's, in a way, that's also cool, you know. Biggest problem? Oof. That's hard to say. That all depends for uh, that all that, that that all depends on how you look at it. You know, I mean, um, I think probably for me, my biggest my biggest thing is like um, the internet brought a lot of good things, like a lot of stuff that uh, I mean, everybody can check everything out, which I think is great. But the other, I think the age of the internet, I have to say, is <laughs> see you later. I think not just the internet is that. Um, is that everything is really quick, everything is really fast, you know, like um, people like a band this month and then the next month they, they, they don't care anymore. Uh, people are very, you know, like also maybe uh, depending everything, uh, clothes, the way they think, uh, the way they look at bands is very fast and very quick. And I think that's a little bit sad, you know, like I think there's a lot of bands that deserve support, that deserve long-time support, people that, that quit their jobs and, peop and people that actually uh, try to stay in the road, you know. Um, you know, basic, basically people giving up their social lives, their professional lives to, uh, to be, you know, like to play for people. And uh, people look at it very, I think sometimes in a way, um, that it's not worth their support anymore because they're not the latest trend anymore. And I think that's, I think that's one of the bigger problems in hardcore. I think hardcore needs more people to support bands that really are out there and really have the heart in the right place and try to build up a scene, tour all the time, play places, come to places like Belgrade, go to places like bands usually don't go, you know, or maybe not go a lot. And I mean, and I'm not, it's not just because we're in Belgrade, but in general, I mean, people, people, I think people need to be more appreciating that. And that's what I kind of miss a little bit, you know, the um, uh, the support where people don't uh, look at a band for superficial things. I mean, if you if you don't like a band anymore because the music turns to shit or because the attitude turns to shit, that's a good reason. But not because it's not the latest flavor anymore or because kids are not wearing their shirts anymore or whatever. You know, like I think there's a lot of bands that. A lot of bands, a lot of good bands, new bands, old bands that deserve support and I think that's what the scene is missing a little bit. Long term support, you know, and respect for what came before this generation and generations, you know. No, I'm optimistic. Uh, you're talking hardcore in general? Oh, in general. No, I'm, I'm you know, I mean, the, it looks like the world is very negative, but in all honesty, I meet a lot of people that have a positive attitude and we're the people, you know? It's a cliche, but we're the people. We have to make the world and they can try to take the world from us. But if there's a lot of people that try to get along, a lot of people that make a good, make good thing out of it, you know, I think it'll work out. And I think soon people will see that a lot of people that try to spread hate, um, that they're, you know, like that they're not right. It's a lot of misconceptions about, you know, people are, uh, people are fearful and people, you know, people are, uh, people don't know what the future holds and are afraid of things. But I think, seriously, I mean, 
I think a lot of people actually deep inside themselves know, you know, what's the right thing. And I got, I, I just got trust in that. And as for hardcore, if people are saying hardcore is dead or hardcore sucks or whatever, hey, if it wouldn't be for hardcore, I wouldn't be where I am. I wouldn't be what I, what I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do the things I do. I wouldn't be the person I am. And hardcore now, and not because of anything, but I've been running around the scene for 30 years now. Back in the day, hardcore wasn't better. It wasn't better 20 years ago, it wasn't better 30 years ago. Um, there's a lot of criticism you can have, but hardcore's never been better and hardcore's never been more alive, so I'm very positive about a lot of things.